This is a little feeding video I'm doing about my uh, corn snake. Uh, it was born according to the individual that sold it to me at uh, Repticon uh, in February uh, last July. This little guy is, uh, I haven't held him for a couple days, but he is the uh, most friendly snake that I've ever had. Uh, he was 18 inches long and now he's more like about 24 inches long. He is absolutely a excellent uh, example of a beginner uh, snake and uh, I'm going to feed him some uh, little pinkies. You know, he's uh, large enough to eat you know, uh, hoppers or something like that, but uh, I have this little thing that I do with him and uh, he's just going to be looking around probably for some food. I have to go over and get my uh, uh, tongs, or I can just hand him a, a little pinky just to begin with and see if he wants to eat it. I think this is on screen. We'll see if he just really grabs that little pinky, and he does. He hasn't eaten for about four days, and uh, he's going to gobble that little pinky down. And I've got uh, two more pinkies for him to eat. They're very, very small uh, food for a, a corn snake that, of this uh, size, but uh, I'm going to uh, feed him these two. But before I feed him those two uh, little uh, pinkies, I've uh, scented a piece of beef heart in this uh, baggie with the uh, pinkies so that. Uh, He'll uh, smell this beef heart here and uh, think that it's a uh, something delicious to eat and I'm going to uh, feed him some beef heart uh, according to what I've uh, learned online. Uh, this is known as uh, a very good food. Uh, it's uh, high in protein. I've trimmed off all the fat and uh, I suspect that uh, he may not uh, uh, he's just barely swallowed that first pinky, but I'm going to see what he does with this beef heart. I, this is the third time I've fed him beef heart, and uh, I think he's going to eat it again. He's uh, smelling it. Oh, he's going to take it. This might take a little while for him to get it, but... Uh, he will probably just gobble this beef heart down just like he usually does and after he gets done uh, eating that beef heart I'll offer him uh, that pinky and I suspect he will eat it and uh, of course I won't handle the uh, my corn snake uh, for a day or two after this uh, feeding however um, the uh, beef heart is a very nutritious meal. He's uh, growing so quickly that uh, I have to watch uh, his uh, becoming too fat. Uh, I understand that there are some health problems uh, that go along with uh, power feeding um, corn snakes um, and this I think could only be described as power feeding and um, I think he's uh, a very uh, wonderful pet. Uh, this is the only corn snake I will probably ever own uh, due to my age. Uh, their usual lifespan is uh, over 10 years and uh, I have many tropical fish and I have box turtles and uh, one Russian tortoise and uh, so this is my first endeavor with a keeping a corn snake uh, the full extent of its life. He's <laughs> just gobbling down this beef heart like uh, uh, he, it's normal for a, a corn snake to eat a cow. I, I got this uh, beef heart at uh, one of the local stores. Uh, I sliced it and uh, I feed it to uh, also to my uh, box turtles. I've had uh, box turtles for about three years and uh, 
uh, he, um, beef heart is a, a wonderful food, according to, uh, I'll use his name, Viper Keeper. He said that when he's force feeding his uh, snakes, sometimes instead of trying to force feed a, uh, usually it's a, he deals with uh, very poisonous snakes, and uh, instead of force feeding uh, a very poisonous snake a uh, pinky, he will uh, feed it uh, force feed and when they don't eat normally a uh, uh, piece of beef heart. And uh, what I will do is uh, continue videotaping this uh, for everyone's delight. Uh, you can fast forward through this section here. I'm just going to let it just keep running. And if I don't run out of battery or uh, space on the uh, video, uh, you're going to get to see my corn snake gobble down the, at least a four inch uh, slice of beef heart. And uh, then I'm going to check the camera to make sure that he's in frame. Yep, he's in frame. He's got about an inch and a quarter of that beef heart left to eat. And uh, I'm going to probably uh, not just immediately feed him a pinky, but I'm going to let him do his normal behavior. He usually uh, gobbles down the beef heart and then goes into, uh, I'm going to look for some more food mode. And I'll see if that's true this time. He uh, loves his little tiny enclosure, as far as I can tell. He doesn't really try to escape ever. And uh, he's got that beef heart down. I'm going to just get the uh, little pinky out. <laughs> that is a little pinky, I tell you. Look at that little bugger. Eh, it is very small. But I'll, I'll see if he's hungry. Now I know that uh, from being online to all the forums and stuff that this is not a good thing to do. But uh, I don't think my uh, corn snake is that fat. He's sort of searching around here. And uh, I don't know if he's uh, interested in more food or not. We'll just see. Oh, there. Okay, I, I let him look, smell it. He looks like he's interested in it. I'm going to see if he eats it. Now some people say just because he eats it doesn't mean that that's good for him. You know, and he's having normal uh, bowel movements and uh, he's just going to gobble down that uh, pinky just like that after that big chunk of beef heart. And uh, I also raise pigeons and I'm going to probably you know, next year, uh, try, uh, I got the, the third pinky here for him, see if he wants to eat that. I'm going to give him a chance to look around a little bit and see if that food settles well in his belly. And then I'm going to offer him this uh, third pinky. They're little tiny buggers. Uh, my corn snake is growing at a different rate than some of the ones that I've seen online, uh, I think. I think he's still hungry, uh, but hey, if he can't decide how much he wants to eat, I don't know. Look at that. He's going to eat not only that, uh, he's going to gobble down one more third pinky. And then I'm going to continue filming and see if uh, he wants to eat any more. Uh, I'm going to download this onto the internet and uh, list it. Uh, under corn snake eating cow or um, just a corn power feeding corn snakes um, this kind of feeding I'm sure from what some people say are going to lead to health problems this uh, little corn snake I mentioned uh, was born probably July of 2007 and here it is uh, April uh, 11 of 2012 and uh, he, uh, he, all that scent of uh, pinky is all over my fingers. I'm, I'm curious whether he's going to want to bite me or not, but I suspect that now he has decided that he is full. 
I'm going to move my finger a little bit and see if I can attract him. Uh, there's scent of mouse all over my fingers, and I'm going to see if he's going to bite me. He's smelling me. He's interested, but not really that interested. Now I'm going to see if he's truly the escape artist that we found uh, in all the uh, information I found online is that uh, corn snakes are escape artists. And Well, I've got the lid right here and I can put it over the top of him and I'll see if he's unhappy with the cage. They are the most amazing domesticated animals I've ever seen. He's going to explore. He's going to go outside of his... Uh, cage a little bit. Now, some people talk about regurgitation, of course, you know, when you feed a snake like this, um, and uh, he is, uh, that's definitely a possibility, uh, but my snake, as far as I know, this is about where the last uh, mouse or two and the uh, beef heart is, that's about eight or nine inches down into his body. I'm going to see what he wants, which he's uh, quickly outgrowing. Um, this area here, I have a small uh, hide for him. That This one here, I locate over the top of his heat source. And I just have a paper towel in here. When he goes into blue, or he's ready to shed, I uh, add uh, moisture to the paper towel and, of course, replace it when necessary. And uh, and he can crawl in this little hole here and uh, I put it right here and uh, that allows him to make a choice whether to uh, be inside of the warm hide or inside of my El Cheapo hide here and when he uh, starts to shed of course moisture uh, helps them shedding he's shed uh, two times since I've gotten him and uh, both sheds have just come off completely in one piece and uh, he just crawls in there and right now it's just dry and uh, he is just completely content he's about 24 inches long now and uh, probably longer than that but uh, this is uh, power feeding a corn snake on um, well I don't know. Uh, it's sort of surprising to hand feed them instead of using my tweezers and to see him not want to eat my fingers. Uh, of course, he's eaten quite a bit of food, but he's looking around and is very interested in the idea that the lid isn't on the enclosure now. It's got some really great little uh, clips that... Uh, allow me to lock it on in place but uh, I think if I actually presented him with another pinky he'd eat it but uh, judging by the size of his body you know he doesn't look uh, grossly obese or anything like that to me uh, at this young age I think that most of the uh, protein that I've been giving him is being converted into uh, body size and mass and um, I don't think that that's an, a normal thing. Uh, he is uh, a very... The corn snakes are awesome. They are the very best beginner snakes in our world, as far as I know. They don't have any odor. Uh, uh, bowel movements are the only thing that causes any uh, problem or odor. And... Uh, if I pick this guy up, I, oh, he's going into his hide. I don't know if you can see that or not. I moved the water a little bit. But he's going into the hide where, uh, and this probably is a good place to end the uh, film. I was going to actually try to pick that little bugger up and see if he'd puke on camera. But uh, regurgitate? No. He's just content to go into his hide. I've got a little rock on there just to make sure that it doesn't move out of the way. And I'll move his water back like this and this other hide here. He probably won't shed. Oh, he's sticking his little nose back out 